Hi guys, we're back from Sparkles College with a new lecture for you that says why Pakistan can't fail like Sri Lanka. We already discussed in the last lecture what problems is Pakistan facing, what problems was Sri Lanka facing, where is Sri Lanka standing at the moment and where is Pakistan leading to. So before I start this lecture, I just want to, you know, request everyone to please subscribe the channel and just, you know, press the bell icon so that you can get updated with our latest videos and updates. Thank you very much. Moving on to our lecture, why Pakistan can't fail like Sri Lanka. Pakistan is a country that is going through a lot of problems, but it still has some capabilities that are hidden inside, which is going to stop it, stop Pakistan from getting into the similar situation in which Sri Lanka is. This is a big topic that we need to discuss because it's quite interesting to think that while we say that Pakistan is going through a lot of issues at this time and it is on the same track as Sri Lanka is, what are some of the factors that is that are going to stop Pakistan from failing like Sri Lanka, from Pakistan to going into the exact situation like Sri Lanka? This is what we're going to redeem in this topic. All right. Pakistan economic crisis. Before I'm going to take you to the main aspect and main topic of this discussion, I want to give you an overview of what we discussed before. Pakistan's economic crisis. We all know this very well, that Pakistan's rupee is one of the world's worst performing currencies. Overall, if we look at Pakistan's currency, it's world's worst performing. Why? Because we have seen how much the currency is depreciating, how much the weak the currency is getting uh, from the other currencies, right? So just an example I'm going to give you to all those who don't understand how currency works. So um, on Friday, it was like 200, it was like $210 equal to one rupee, right? Or, or at times it's $250 equal to one rupee. It means that US is 250 times more richer than every Pakistani living in that country. This is just an example of exchange rate in terms of US, right? So this is what I'm trying to tell you that Pakistan's currency is deteriorating day by day which means that Pakistan is facing one of the, it's having one of the biggest problems is that uh, its currency is going as a worst performing currency. We also studied about how foreign exchange reserves are absolutely low. We know that there are no foreign exchange reserves as such in Pakistan. There's absolutely nothing. There's no remittance. There's all, you know, the foreign exchange investments that have been drawn out from Pakistan. Again, the third point justifies it's it's unable to attract much needed foreign investment. It's unable to attract. Why? Because everyone knows that Pakistan is having a very bad condition at this point. So it's not, uh, you know, good for any country to invest in Pakistan because they can lose their investment. There won't be any profits for them. Third, uh, fourth, domestic political instability and increased vulnerability to terrorism. We all know Political instability is the hot topic in Pakistan at the moment, right? PTI, you know, and the other Noon League and all these problems, how they're all the time on the TV fighting with each other, what are the conditions, there are so many rallies, there are so many protests going on. So there's massive political instability and there's increased vulnerability to terrorism because if you're going to give chances of getting the crowd, you know, together and just having a bad situation, political instability in the country, it's going to lead you to terrorism. That's another very big problem that is arising. The external debt of Pakistan has increased many folds and its currency is trading at its lowest rate. We already discussed that in detail in the last lecture that, you know, external debt is a lot on Pakistan and currency is also, you know, trading at its lowest. So the exports have been decreased and, you know, the imports have been banned because, you know, there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of taxes on uh, imports have been uh, like you know but so that imports can be discouraged but again we don't have those products in our country so again it's leading to a lot of you know uh, uncertainty and a lot of problems because when the trade is less the relations are also deteriorating with the countries IMF and other financial institu institutions are imposing very tough conditions for the loan facility so we know that IMF uh, International Monetary Fund is and the other financial institutions as well. They're imposing severe conditions, severe, you can say, you know, um, conditions for, uh, you know, the loan facility that they're saying, okay, we're going to grant you the loan only if you uh, agree to this and that. So they're putting some very tough conditions and say very tough standards to 
let Pakistan get loans from them. Again, a very big problem. Then inflation is recorded high and budget of all development sectors of Pakistan has been reduced to minimum. Of course, when the inflation is so high, everything is so expensive, right? So the, all the, the developmental projects in Pakistan, their budget is going to be reduced because everything is going to be expensive. If you're getting cement to build a building, for example, right? Uh, th- you are going to purchase less cement. You're going to, you know, limit that budget. This is just an example. So in every department, in every sector of Pakistan, whether it's uh, agriculture department, industry department, fishing department, tourism department, every department or every sector in Pakistan is facing this problem of reduced budget due to increased inflation, right? Moving on, similarities of Pakistan and Sri Lanka crisis. Recent events carry an uncanny resemblance to the recent turn of events in Pakistan. We already st- uh, studied that there's a lot of there are a lot of similarities. Uh, of Pakistan and Sri Lanka crisis and some of the one I'm going to touch again I've already discussed those in detail with you in the previous lectures so you don't have to you know think like that that you know you haven't done this because we have already discussed the last lecture was based on the similarities of Pakistan and Sri Lanka's crisis so again this is very important and I just want you to just pay attention to this so that you can understand that what is Pakistan facing and how it can protect itself so way forward and reforms okay so this is what we're going to discuss but first of all i want to touch that what are the similarities between pakistan and sri lanka so in desperate need of res- resumption of the extended funded facility eff and the imf program again they they need they're in desperate need to get some funds from eff which is the extended fund facility and imf which is the international monetary fund consumer price index measured the inflation rate surged into 13.4% that is too much. The 13.4% CPI has been, uh, you know, increased. Consumer price index is actually the representation of inflation. Those who have studied economics or those who have studied the monetary theory course, they would know that consumer price index is a, is a reflection of the inflation in a country. So that is 13.4% at the moment. That is too much. Trade deficit crossed the 39 billion mark. That is like, you know, tremendously it's big, huge. And the trade deficit has has crossed this amount, 39 billion mark. Import bill is weighted heavily in fuel costs. So import bill, uh, all the import bill that you have is weighed heavily in fuel costs because we don't have fuel, we don't have oil, we don't have energy. And that is why import bills are also extremely expensive and extremely more. Now these are some of the similarities that Pakistan and Sri Lanka has in their crisis. And the biggest one that I can see is inflation. That is leading to every problem over here right moving on a very important concept let me just see all right so a very important concept over here is that why pakistan is not going to collapse like sri lanka when we have studied in detail that you know what problems is pakistan facing and you know pakistan is actually going on the same track as sri lanka is and they're they have to they are getting those same you know uh, you can say hints and they're getting their same uh, problems in every walk of life in every step they're facing the similar issues that Sri Lanka is facing so why can't we say that Pakistan is going to fail or going to collapse like Sri Lanka has collapsed Pakistan hasn't collapsed yet while Sri Lanka has in a way but Pakistan is still standing in a very bad and poor condition but it's still standing it has not collapsed even after COVID-19 right but still it has not not collapsed it's still standing somewhere but what are those reasons that is stopping pakistan to collapse like sri lanka or what are the reasons which are going to stop pakistan in future to collapse like sri lanka these are some of the very important concepts that i want to discuss with you and i really want everyone to pay attention because uh, this is going to lead you to very successful understanding of what pakistan is what sri lanka is what their problems are what their similarities are what their differences are right so why Pakistan is not going to collapse like Sri Lanka? First point, the nation is an atomic power and the world cannot afford a bankrupt Pakistan. So this nation, it's not as weak as we think it. this nation is, right? Pakistan, the major problem is that we are considering Pakistan as a very inferior country. We are not, uh, you know, Imran Khan... Uh, I'm not taking any sides of any political party, but there's one thing that I really like about his speech whenever he gives one, that he always says that we don't want to be slave of US, of the US or we don't want to be a slave of anyone, right? 
so this is something which is very good even us shouldn't be a slave of anyone even we shouldn't be a slave of anyone no country should be slave of one another right so this is something that i really admire when he says that you know pakistan is not going to be uh, a slave of anyone why because he knows the true actual uh, you know importance of pakistan he knows that pakistan is not as bad as we think it is right so the nation is an atomic power and the world cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan so world cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan just because a few hundred millions of dollars of debt cannot be refinanced so we know that we have a lot of like we studied that pakistan is having a trade deficit of 39 billion and it is having right you know the external debt of pakistan is increased manifold and its currency is trading at its lowest rate we know that we have these problems but still it's a few hundred million of dollars of debt right according to a world uh i if we say that uh, with a world i it's just a few hundred millions of dollars so world cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan just because a few hundred million dollars of debt cannot be refinanced because they know that the nation is an atomic power and the world cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan and atomic being an atomic power is a very big thing right if you're an atomic power you need to understand that you have certain power you have certain capability that's the reason that you are an atomic power so that is one reason that these countries in the world who are super powers or who are other countries they are going to step up they are going to step ahead and they are going to in a in a way in the long run they are going to help pakistan they have to come uh for their help because they cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan because they know the worth of pakistan that it's an atomic power and it, its atomic power can be beneficial to them as well then we have the global entities will take significant efforts to refinance the debt ridden country again this pro- uh, point has been carried forward that even though pakistan has bans on goods from india and israel right so india and israel who used to uh you know import goods to pakistan there are bans on those goods there negative list of products that is banned on religious environmental security and health grounds we discussed this pro- point in detail in the last lecture as well that there is a negative list of products that is banned on religious environmental security and health grounds for example religious we uh, our religion doesn't agree to this we should not bring this into pakistan environmental this is going to cause pollution we shouldn't bring it in pakistan security this is not going to be secured for pakistan health grounds this medicine is not correct right this equipment is not right nice for people of pakistan or not accurate or not optimum so the thing is that there are so many goods that have been banned there is a negative list of products that is banned on religious environmental security and health ground bans on goods from india and israel so global entities will take significant efforts all right after all eventually they will eventually they will take significant efforts to refinance the debt ridden country so this is again that it's a atomic power and then they cannot afford a bankrupt pakistan they will take significant efforts to refinance the debt ridden country why the reasons have been given and have been discussed with you i hope these are these points are clear to you moving on uh, we have very important point that is imf loan we have already discussed about imf in detail that imf is international monetary fund we very well know that you know this entity is actually there to help the people to help them to uh, you know in bad times or in crucial times imf is a financial institution that is going to help the countries uh, to get you know uh, secured when you know it's an agency of the united nation and an, and is an international finance in, a financial institution that is headquartered in washington dc so it ha- it's consists of 190 countries so it helps the countries who, who are facing a uh, problems so imf on july 14 they confirmed that that an agreement was reached with pakistan to restore a stalled stalled lo- uh, loan program so they have agreed they have given an agreement to pakistan that they will give loan to pakistan right that is the reason that it's not going to collapse it will have loan sooner or later and it's going to just you know redeem itself there is a hope that it can redeem itself increase its size from 6 billion to 7 billion while they were giving a loan of 6 billion now will they will be giving a loan of 7 billion to pakistan all right so on imf on july 14 it has been confirmed if you go on google and if you search about it you'll find some great details about that agreement as well that was uh, sent by imf to pakistan uh, to you know to restore us uh, stole loan program and to give them loan the only problem over here is that their conditions are very harsh right so pakistan has to find a solution to that otherwise they have extended the help in a way that they are saying that okay we're going to give you loans but at their terms which we have to discuss and negotiate on but the thing is that that is the reason that we say that pakistan might is not going to collapse like Shri-